Good morning, everybody. This is Trish Palmer here, Limestone Coast Master Hypnotherapist. So in today's learning criteria, we're going to be talking about the responsibility of the mind. So the responsibility of the mind, when you think about, oh, well, I know what my mind does and I know what it's responsible for. But in today's uh, session, you're actually going to learn your own language. Hi, Geraldine. How are you going, beautiful? So you're going to learn the language of your own mind. So how to communicate to yourself much, much better so that you can get better results. So here we go. The responsibility of the mind. The mind consists of three major sections. First is the conscious. Then we've got the pre-conscious, sometimes known as the subconscious. And it's there. And the subconscious is protected by what's known as a critical factor. I'll go more into that later on. And then you've got the unconscious. So it's divided up into three layers. Many people have a misconception that it only has two layers of the conscious and the subconscious, but it actually has three layers to it. So the first layer, the conscious mind consists of everything that is inside our awareness. This is the part of us that thinks and talks in a rational way. This is the part of us is known as auditory digital. And these are what we're told to do, what we can and can't do, laws and sensations. The conscious mind includes such things such as sensations that we get, perceptions that we have, whether they're right or wrong, it's still a perception, memories, feelings and fantasies. All of these exist within our current awareness. Sometimes we'll go shopping and we'll buy a certain shirt and then when we actually wear it later on we think wow that does not look so good on me as what it did on the mannequin and that's because in our conscious awareness we had this perception of that it may be something else. So the conscious awareness is actually closely allied with the pre-conscious which includes all the things that we are not thinking about but we can easily draw upon and bring it into the conscious at any time. Things like habits, education, desires, needs, knowledge. Sometimes you come out with random facts and you're like, how did you know that? And it's like, I don't know, I just knew that. So things that are in the conscious mind, uh, things that the conscious mind wants hidden from awareness are actually stored in the unconscious, so in the pre-conscious. While we are aware of these feelings like thoughts and urges, emotions, the unconscious mind can still influence our behaviours. Things in our unconscious mind are only available to the conscious via a representation of imagery. So we can only access this information via dreams, awareness, by a stimulus of one of our five, five senses. So we can only access that information when required via a desire, via a need, via all these other things that are going on. So it's kind of like a filing system. Your pre-conscious is your filing system where you put all of that information like last year's tax, your birth certificate and all this sort of stuff, but you don't need it all the time. So it's just stored there. But whenever you want to access that information, you can actually draw upon it with the correct trigger. So the conscious mind is just the tip of the iceberg. We use the iceberg metaphor in hypnosis training because it is so impactful. So if you imagine a piece of ice that is floating out in the ocean, the very top of it that is above the water is the conscious mind. That's just the tip of it. So the iceberg is 10% conscious, which is above the water, and below the water is 90% pre-conscious and unconscious as well. So the con in the conscious mind, it is responsible for all of your willpower, your short-term memory, your logical thinking, and your critical thinking as well. So critical thinking is coming down to the do's and don'ts of society and the consequences that will occur if you go against the law. The pre-conscious and subconscious mind is where all of your beliefs are stored. Your emotions, you could be watching a, a movie and then all of a sudden you get quite emotional about it and you didn't even know that was there. And that's because the movie triggered you to bring that emotion from the subconscious to the conscious awareness. The pre-conscious also stores your habits and re your reactions, whether they're good or bad, that's where they're going, that's where they're getting filed. It also stores your values and your morals. So if you have some really core values inside yourself, like I will never steal anything, that's where all of that is stored. So it automatically says to you, don't steal that, don't do that. You don't have to think about it. It's just stored there in your filing system. 
The subconscious also stores the long-term memory. So that's why you can go back and you can remember your last birthday or you can remember a gift that someone gave you or maybe somebody will say, where did you get those earrings? And you're like, oh, my mother gave them to me. That's where all that is stored. Your subconscious also stores your imagination and your intuition. So your gut feeling and those energies and vibrations that are going on around you. So what's the difference? Like seriously, what's the difference? What's the difference between conscious versus pre-conscious? So the conscious mind is all the things that we are currently aware of. The pre-conscious, also known as the subconscious, is things that we are presently unaware of, but can pull into the conscious when we need. So what we do is we have that filing system, and if we need any information out of that filing system, we can go into it and pull out that file and go, this is the correct one. So for example, when asked, what did you have for breakfast? It can take a few moments to recall it. These are known as what, uh, these are known as ordinary memories. So we can pull it from the subconscious into the conscious awareness once triggered with the question. So we can pull that information. But the thing is, sometimes it might take you a few moments because you'll be like, oh, uh, what did I have for breakfast? That's right. Because it's just an ordinary, it's an ordinary memory. It's not something that you really have to delve on. Where if you ask someone, hey, where did you get that jacket? They'd be like, oh, and they'll remember it a little bit faster if they really love that jacket. Information in the pre-conscious mind can surface a lot in dreams and can also create what's known as a slip of the tongue. That's why when people are in heightened emotions, when they're in arguments, when they're in debates, when they're trying to get a point across, all of a sudden they can have a slip of the tongue and they, they uh, let this information out. And that's where it's come so fast from the pre-conscious into the conscious that it's just gone bleh, and you can actually deal with the consequences then. The pre-conscious can influence our behaviours without one single conscious thought. So the unconscious mind, what lies beneath the surface, what lies underneath the ocean? The responsibilities of the unconscious mind is summed up in six very, very simple points. So the first thing that the unconscious mind wants to do is to preserve the body. All it wants to do is protect it. That's why when some people go through painful experiences, they'll create a fear or a phobia. And that's because that way the, the, the subconscious can protect the body from ever experiencing that level of pain again, that level of fear again, that level of hurt again. So its main purpose, its number one purpose is to preserve the body, to survive in this survival world of ours. The second point that it likes to have is it is a servant and it likes to follow orders. Now, there is a difference between a servant and a slave, and that is all interpreted by how you decide to put those thoughts into your filing system. So the filing system will automatically pull out the files just as you command at any single moment in any time. But if you do it in a bad way or an angry way, it'll just constantly do it in an angry way. If you do it in a nice way, it'll re return to you in a nice way. So it is a servant. It likes to follow orders regardless of how you treat it. The responsibility also is it is highly moral. The subconscious is highly moral towards your values. So if you have something inside of you where you're just like, no, I will not do that for any reason whatsoever, that's because it is protecting your morals. This is who you are in your core inside, who you are deep within your soul. The unconscious mind also stores your memories. It's that filing system that I was talking about before. It's known as the amygdala and the hippocampus. And it's where all of that, those systems work together to make sure that everything is filed properly, appropriately, and in a sustainable way. The unconscious mind is symbolic as well. So it relies on the five senses to become triggered to access those files. And the, the unconscious mind does not process negatives. All it knows is to do the action. So you can say to it, don't think of chocolate, and it'll just go, chocolate. It doesn't worry about the rest. It just streamlines it all down to a very analytical process where it's just like, chocolate. I can say to you now, don't think of a black cat, and you will think of a black cat because your brain's just gone black cat. It's just focusing on the imagery. 
the memories, the symbols. That's all it focuses on. It doesn't do positive or negative. So you can do as much positive thinking as you want. But at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, you're going to have to work on being a bit more mindful towards yourself. So that becomes an automatic habit. So let's move on to the critical factor. Now, a lot of people call this a critical faculty. It's not the critical faculty. That has been a misconception in our industry for quite some time. It's known as the critical factor. So please start to get it right straight off the bat because later on when down the track when you're more trained, you actually are going to be hanging around with a lot of professionals that know this information and you want to come across as somebody who's been correctly trained. So the critical factor is what's known as a security guard between the conscious and the pre-conscious. So there's a little thing in there known as your bullshit receptor, okay? You must bypass the critical factor in order to access the other levels of the consciousness. However, you have to really tread carefully because if you take a wrong direction with the critical factor, the critical factor, the security guard will kick in and they will kick your ass out. Okay, this is there to protect the morals, to protect all of the belief systems, to protect that body, to protect the whole being as a whole. That's what the critical factor does. So you will be learning some hypnosis and NLP techniques that will allow you to bypass the critical factor with ease. But it does take patience, time and a little bit of practice. So I'll give you an example now. This is one of my favorite examples. So I'm going to bypass your critical factor right now. So you may or may not brush your teeth, but you use a toothbrush. Now, I don't know why it's called a toothbrush, because you actually brush your teeth with it. And it's called a te it should be called a teeth brush. Think about it for just a moment. Because no matter how much I say it should be called a teeth brush, you would go, no, it's a toothbrush. It sounds weird. It sounds weird. But as soon as I bring in the argument that it brushes teeth and it should be referred to as a teeth brush instead of a toothbrush, because you'd, you'd be cleaning more than one tooth, you're like, oh, that makes sense. So that's where you bypass the critical factor and you've now taken on a new belief that it probably should be called a teeth brush instead of a toothbrush. So join me in the next video. I'm going to be talking about the structure of reality and how you can actually explain it to yourself and learn it yourself. The structure of reality is always different for so many different people. And when it comes down to the structure of reality, it's amazing how many people can actually see one thing and then somebody else will go, no, that person wasn't there. Weren't they there? And they'll distort it in their minds. So I'm going to be teaching you in the future how to bypass a critical factor. Go back and watch this video, check it out with some more explanations of the conscious and the unconscious and join me for the next video called The Structure of Reality Completely Explained. Talk soon. Bye-bye.